Hi there. My name's Amy Tollyfields and I'm a published poet based in the UK. Um, I have two published poetry collections. One is called Toy Soldiers uh, and that was released in November just gone, so 2020. Uh, and the other is The Suicide, uh, which was in 2018. Um, both through Olympia Publishers who are based in London. Um, I don't think I'll make a habit of these videos, um, but I did uh, I did enjoy making one the other day with a brief update, so I thought I'd make another one. Um, the title of the video is slightly clickbaity in the sense that it's not really a curse as such. It's just something that I wanted to sort of talk about because I know poets generally will probably find this mildly frustrating. Um, but uh, I think one of the difficulties um, in being a poet is the tendency of the reader to um, ascribe everything that you write to something that you personally have experienced or felt or been through. Um, and I think that's, that's natural. You know, I, I read poetry, I read writing of, of any kind. Um, and, uh, you know, I, I feel that I probably give too much meaning to the things I'm reading and think maybe that's what that person's been through. And I think um, that can be a mis a, not a mistake because it doesn't really sort of harm anyone, but, you know, it, it's, not, it's not necessarily correct in terms of that person's experience. Um, I mean, a lot of my poetry obviously is, is at least semi-autobiographical because it has to come from somewhere um, but by no means is all of my poetry autobiographical. Um, let me think of some examples. Um, so obviously The Suicide is a really a really obvious one to sort of start with. Um, so The Suicide, <clears throat> the actual poem, which is obviously the title of my second book, uh, first book, sorry. Um, it's also the title poem, so the, it's also the first poem in the book and it's obviously quite a difficult poem for a lot of people. Uh, the subject matter obviously does cover suicide or suicidal thoughts at the very least. Um, now for me, that was um, marginally autobiographical, but I did, I did embellish and I did add drama to that um, and sort of make a more exciting poem, a dark humour poem. Um, you know, it was, it was a mixture of genuine feeling and um, my own kind of desire to add sort of some excitement to that for the sake of the reader, I suppose. I mean, I, I've i talked already um, in interviews about my performance background, um, so that poem was written to perform and part of performance is obviously to entertain, um, which sounds awful if you're talking about suicide but um, you know you do have to you do have to add a little bit of something whether that's humor or you know a storyline or you know something that can kind of engage uh, that's a very rhythmic poem it's a very um, engaging poem and um, you know the parts of that uh, process are to are to entertain uh, when you're writing I think um, so you know I <laughs> Not to talk too much about the performance side of things, but obviously I, I have in the past been able to play characters um, and I think that that's important, you know, when you're when you're reading someone's writing is to understand that they could just be creating a character. Um, and certainly with my writing, there are elements of that. There's elements of um, just... I think embellishment is really the best word. It sounds inauthentic and it isn't because in that moment what you're writing feels very real but it doesn't mean that that's an all-consuming feeling you have all the time. A lot of the times I'll write a poem and then you know that that feeling or that emotion will kind of mostly evaporate um, after writing so it's really a case of that being kind of a, a moment in itself um, preserved forever which I, I like, um, I like that a lot. So, so yeah, but I mean, it's, it is interesting and obviously you get different reactions. So when I perform the suicide to, um, to a theater audience, you know, they, 
they laughed in certain parts, which was what I wanted. Um, and then when I performed it to a non-theatre audience, um, and credit to them, they sort of wanted to know that I was okay after the performance, and they sort of wanted to sort of say, you know, it's all right, <laughs> which is really nice. But you know, at the same time, you can't assume that that's necessarily my own uh, experience. Um, so you know, there is. I don't want to say trappings because it's not it doesn't really make any huge difference to anyone's life. But you know, there's not always. Um, there's not always a hundred percent truth in that person's poem in terms of their own life. You know, it's it's uh, it's a variable thing. Um, I mean, in Toy Soldiers, there are lots of poems um, that are very highly charged emotionally, um, and for me, that would have been a case of in that moment, I felt probably fifty percent of what's in the poem. Uh, but then in order to write, sort of vamp that up a bit um, in my writing. I mean, there are poems where, I mean, most, just to kind of give you a brief oversight, um, when I write, I'm usually quite happy um, because I have to feel quite happy to write, generally. Um, so I won't be feeling, if the poem's very sad, I won't be feeling quite as sad as the poem seems maybe um so that's really something to bear in mind um there are a couple where i was pretty low uh, when i wrote them and that that works one of two ways either the poem becomes something you would never share ever because it's too it's too far along the sort of self-indulgent route or it's a masterpiece because you've tapped into that emotion perfectly um, you know, there's there's really quite, I think when you're feeling genuinely the same as the poem that you write, it's either awful or it's fantastic. And you have to make sure that you stay critical with that. You know, it, it's a piece of work, it's a piece of writing, it's not, um, it's not your diary, it's something for you to share with the world eventually. That's how I see poetry because I'm, I'm published. Um, so, you know, it, it's not a case that I felt everything in my poems, um, and certainly some of the things described are things I haven't experienced myself. Um, uh, I think as well that I write a lot of history poetry, although I don't always, um, don't write it a lot, but I do write some history poems, so Clarence in The Suicide, that's a history poem, Boudicca in Toy Soldiers is a history poem. I've written one recently um, that's a history poem that I'm keeping secret for now. Um, you know, so I write all sorts, I write all kinds of different experiences and not all of them are my own. I think, I mean, I am, I am a lesbian, so, you know, lesbian writing is something that I can do naturally. Um, and if I describe lesbian feelings, those are probably feelings I've had at some point. But again, they may have been sort of hyped up um, a notch or two. Um, so yeah, you know, it's just a case of, I, I suppose, it's not a curse, it's just, you know, there's, it's obviously a trade-off from what you do that um, people will always think that that's your, your own life. Um, I think a lot of writers, although not all, but a lot of writers probably have quite dull lives and that's that's where writing is such an exciting part of their life because they can create worlds, create characters um, and certainly any performer, poet that has that performance background, you know, do bear in mind that there will be an element of the theatrical. Um, but yeah, I mean, it, some of my poems, you know, they there's a lot of colours a lot of emotions to kind of uh, metaphors to describe emotions. So again, that's where you leave the the sort of I don't want to say tangible because it's still tangible, but you know you leave the um, the obvious autobiographical, and it becomes you exploring different ideas, different feelings in your writing, um, and it is an exciting process, and it is a fairly enjoyable process. So any poems that are overly sad 
Um, you know, it's it's genuinely probably been written, more than likely been written in a place of not feeling quite that sad. So, yeah. Um, but yeah, no, uh, I just thought I'd share that, you know, and, and obviously give a bit of clarity to that because I think poets generally have that trapping where, um, yeah, and it's not trapping, but, you know, they sort of are then given a new life, um, a life that people imagine that they might have, which in many cases is probably quite far from the truth. Um, and that's just one of those things that comes with, with being an author and, and having your writing available, is that people will make assumptions of what really happened. Who knows? Um, thank you for watching. Again, I don't know that I'll do a lot of these, I just felt it was nice doing one the other day, so I'd just give it another go. But I don't I don't really want to do a lot of video blogs. I think I only really want to create material that complements the books, um, rather than detracting or diluting them. Um, you know, I want to make things that will only ever complement. I will include links um, below to buying books, um, because they're both very, very good. <laughs> I'm biased. Um, but I will include some links and then, you know, if you'd like to buy them, then you can. And I'll be very grateful for you uh, doing so. Um, but yeah, I just thought I'd, I'd share that with you today. Have a good day and thank you so much for watching. Take care. Bye-bye.